The confirmed number of cases of the coronavirus in Los Angeles County comes to 159,045. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 4,104. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases now comes to 865, with total confirmed deaths remaining at 53. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Leslie Robbins. It's 4 p.m. on Monday, July 20th. Governor Gavin Newsom held a press briefing this afternoon to give updates on the state's response to COVID-19. Newsom addressed the personal care industry with new guidelines on how hair and nail salons, along with barbershops, can operate outdoors to meet the new criteria. Newsom says previous guidelines were unclear and didn't address local ordinances, such as the outdoor use of chemicals, and it was much more complicated than some had considered. In the 12-page guidance, it says outdoor operations may be conducted under a tent, canopy, or other sun shelter, as long as no more than one side is closed, allowing sufficient outdoor air movement. Salons and barbershops should not perform a service that would require a customer to have to enter the establishment. Business owners are also cautioned that by rewiring and using electrical extension cords outdoors, it could be a hazard leading to fires or electrocution, and to be sure to comply with Cal OSHA's guidelines to electrical safety. Be sure to avoid tripping hazards from cords or other equipment in outdoor work areas. Use skin protection when not under the shade. And if there is lightning within six miles of your location, to stop operations immediately and seek indoor shelter. These are just a few of the listed guidelines along with social distancing, wearing those face masks, screenings, disinfecting protocols, and training to ensure everyone is aware of the safety measures. As of today, 33 counties still remain on the state's watch list, which represents a majority of the state's population. The U.S. military is stepping in to assist local hospitals overwhelmed by the surge in coronavirus cases. Close to some 740 military doctors, nurses and healthcare professionals were deployed to California and Texas. Now, while the bulk of the medical per personnel will be sent to various regions in Texas, here in California, more than 150 Air Force medical staff will assist in intensive care units. The state reported nearly 20,000 new cases in the last two days, the largest two-day total in confirmed cases since the pandemic began. In Texas, nearly 600 Army and Navy medical staff support have been called in to assist hospitals struggling to deal with the surge in COVID-positive patients, filling up hospital beds to dangerous levels. Skilled nursing homes in California are now asking for the state's help to control the outbreak. The American Healthcare Association and National Center for Assisted Living is asking Governor Gavin Newsom to help expedite lab test processing times, as well as on-site testing. Facilities are also asking for more PPEs like masks and gowns. Close to 40 percent of the state's COVID-19 related deaths have been from nursing home residents. And a recent study found that many facilities are faced with delayed test results from lab companies and lack of protective gear. The California Department of Public Health, which oversees most skilled nursing facilities in the state, said in an email recently that facilities can notify the agency during a daily survey process of any needs they may be experiencing. The CDPH stated that these requests are relayed to the medical and health operational area coordinator system that assists these facilities. Governor Newsom said hundreds of millions of masks are being distributed as the state builds up its stock of PPEs. Student athletes will have to wait a little longer before they can get back into competitive play as the California Interscholastic Federation made a big announcement today. CIF says the new sports calendar won't begin at least until December or January. Fall sports include football, volleyball, water polo, and cross country. They've all been delayed. High school football teams can hold their first official practices of the season on December 14th. That's if the number of COVID-19 cases have gone down by then. Football will play its week one games the second week of January with a 10-game schedule. 
The modified schedule could pose some logistical challenges for schools and teams as girls and boys volleyball are usually played in the fall and spring, respectively, but now are scheduled to begin within a week from each other. Now, not all is lost. High school athletes will now be able to participate in club sports during their high school season for the first time. Well, some good news for Major League Soccer fans. Back at the end of June, the Portland Timbers announced they had signed former West Torn star and 2020 MLS Super Draft third round selection Zach McGraw to a first team contract, making the six foot four defender the first ever player from the U.S. Military Academy to sign with an MLS club. Well, then on July 14th, he made the roster. He was among the substitutes available for their 2 1 win over the LA Galaxy. Down in Florida, Major League Soccer has resumed play with its own tournament called the MLS Is Back Tournament. The latest retailer to announce new face mask policies is the popular Gap brand. Gap Inc., which includes not only Gap, but Old Navy, Banana Republic, Athletica, Intermix, and Janie and Jack stores announced they will institute mask requirements at all of their stores nationwide. The policy, which affects only the company's North America stores, will be effective beginning August 1st. According to company officials, employees are already required to wear masks at stores to help minimize the spread of the virus. Now they're asking customers to help and do the same. Gap says they will provide disposable masks to shoppers if they forget to bring one. They join big box retailers like Walmart, Sam's Club, Kohl's and Nordstrom, who've also implemented a face mask wearing policy. Seniors concerned about their soon-to-expire or already-expired driver's license will be relieved to hear some good news. The California Department of Motor Vehicles announced drivers over the age of 70 will get an automatic license extension for one year. This applies to all drivers 70 and older who have licenses set to expire between March 1st and December 31st of 2020. The extension is for one year from the original expiration date. While the extensions are automatic, drivers will not receive a new card or paper extension in the mail. Drivers can request a free temporary paper extension online if you'd like to receive one, but it's not required to have one. The DMV has notified all law enforcement agencies of this policy, and the TSA is also accepting driver's license for a year after the printed expiration date. For questions or to learn more, go to dmv.ca.gov. The Food and Drug Administration is urging people to take a second look at the hand sanitizers they are using. The agency announced additional hand sanitizers to its list of those that are deemed dangerous because of its methanol ingredient. Now there are 75 toxic hand sanitizers that are said to be dangerous when absorbed through the skin, when ingested, and can also be life-threatening. The one thing all of these products on the list have in common is that they were produced in Mexico. While some have already been recalled, others are recommended for recall. In June, the list only included nine products. Signs of methanol poisoning include nausea, vomiting, headache, blurred vision, and even death, to name a few. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds is the best way to clean your hands. For the full list of toxic hand sanitizers, head to FDA.gov. Families in the Torrance Unified School District have just a few more hours today to let the district know which direction they'd like to go once the new school year gets started. TUSD families were given two options, the blended learning model and the distance learning model. The main difference is that once schools are deemed safe to reopen in-person teaching, students who opt for hybrid learning will be able to return to campus part-time. Students who choose distance learning will remain learning from home for the remainder of the semester. School officials say when the school year begins, everyone will start with distance learning models, which resembles the blended learning model. You have until the end of the day to go online and make your selection. Those who do not respond will automatically be assigned to the blended learning model. Families must choose to opt out of returning to campus when the time comes. Go to TUSD.org. 
The city's downtown does dining al fresco this past weekend was a huge success. The community was able to enjoy dining out from nine participating restaurants in this pilot program. Umbrellas and a security team were there to ensure a safe environment for all. While the program will take a pause next weekend to allow the monthly downtown antique street fair to resume, the pilot program will be back the weekend of July 31st with all of Sartori blocked off from Post Avenue to Marcelina. City staff proposed this idea to give local restaurants additional options once the state closed indoor dining. This allows businesses to continue serving to larger capacities while in safe outdoor settings. Participating restaurants included Local Kitchen, Chato Tea Room, Madre, Capo Irifuni, La Capilla, Tortilla Cantina, Red Car Brewery, The Depot, and Miyabi Uni. To learn more, go to torrentca.gov slash COVID-19. Torrent City officials will be back for their virtual city council meeting tomorrow night. The live meeting starts at 7 p.m. The agenda is available to view online now at torrentca.gov. Some of the items up for discussion includes a resolution denouncing xenophobia and anti-Asian American and Pacific Islander sentiment due to fears of COVID-19. Torrance Public Library will bring to council an item to purchase audiovisual material for its libraries and council will look at a response to COVID-19 rental and business assistance programs to receive funds from CDBC and CARES. The public is encouraged to participate by emailing ahead or calling in during oral communications. You can do so by emailing council meeting public comment at torrentca.gov and calling 310-618 2404. Make sure to watch live on City Cable as well as over the air on 25.2, online at torrentca.gov, Facebook as well as on YouTube. The popular splash pad at Wilson Park reopened to the public today. A popular place for kids and adults to go and beat the heat has been closed since the start of the health pandemic. The 3,000 square foot splash pad zone, which opened in the fall of 2018, has subterranean water jets activated by a button on a pedestal. Now, some of the restrictions at the splash pad include the use of pool toys, beach balls, or any athletic equipment. Glass containers, food, gum, and drinks are also not allowed. Pets or animals are also restricted, and water shoes should be worn instead of street shoes. Young children must wear swim diapers as disposable ones are not allowed while splashing around. The splash pad is open daily from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. at Wilson Park. Staff will be on site to ensure social distancing and safety protocols are being followed. Heading into the end of July, we want to hear what your summer plans are and how you plan to make it the best one yet. Whether you're planning a road trip or a staycation somewhere, no matter how big or small your summer plans are, we want to see how you're capturing each summer moment. Share your summer fun story. Email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. Well, before we go at the end of each program, we like to share stories from our community. Feel good pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and reflect how Torrance truly cares. Well, two Torrance siblings got a very special treat recently. Kalia and Noah Avery enjoyed a 60 car parade to celebrate a big milestone in their health. In 2018, one sibling was diagnosed with brain cancer. And just a few weeks later, the other sibling was diagnosed with medulloblastoma, both rare conditions for children. Well, both are said to now be cancer free and finished with their treatments. The siblings who are four and six years old have shown not only strength, but resilience as they endured a difficult two years making the recent car parade so special. What an inspiration to so many at such a young age. What a great reflection of this community and what a great way to show how Torrance cares. We love sharing stories like this. If you have a great one or just want to say hi, email us. We'd love to hear from you. Well, that's our update for COVID-19 today. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow at 4 p.m. as Hiba Samad brings you the latest updates. Please be safe, stay healthy, and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.
As a mother and a wife, I understand how challenging this moment is for our families and our communities. That is why our state is responding at every level of government to slow the spread of COVID-19 while ensuring our most vulnerable Californians have what they need. But we can each do our part, and it starts by staying home. I know this is a big sacrifice for so many, but staying home saves lives. Learn more at covid19.ca.gov. me, you know, a young millennial, 18 to 40, we love to go out on the town and party. But right now, we got to stay at home. What's that? <laughs> so, since we have to stay at home during this COVID-19 crisis, create your own party. Create your own club right here in the comfort of your own house. Stay safe, everyone. All right. Take care. We'll make it through. Oh, yeah.